welcome to Beyond the Trailer's coverage of the 2014 Academy Awards, going behind the scenes for the top categories with expanded coverage this year. Plus, the annual Beyond the Trailer Oscar poll is open, and you can vote by clicking the link in the video description through February 26th. Now let's take a look at the nominees for Best Supporting Actress. Sally Hawkins, Blue Jasmine. This is not Sally Hawkins' first trip across the pond. The UK actress originally made a splash stateside in 2008 with Mike Lee's Happy Go Lucky, who'd actually given the actress her first big break with All or Nothing in 2002. But while she landed a Golden Globe for Happy Go Lucky, Oscar remained elusive. As a result, she didn't really stay on Hollywood's radar, instead continuing to work steadily in the UK. However, all it takes is for one person to remember you, and that one person was Woody Allen. Granted, when Blue Jasmine first hit theaters, Hawkins didn't get nearly the amount of praise heaped on Kate Blanchett, but it's nice to see that Frozen doesn't feature the only sisters in the spotlight this year. Even without this Oscar nomination, though, big things are on the horizon for Hawkins. She co-stars in this summer's Godzilla, and this Christmas she'll play Mrs. Brown in the Paddington Bear movie. But it is nice that now, when audiences see her on screen, they'll go, hey, it's that actress from the Oscars. Jennifer Lawrence, American Hustle. While she's certainly not even close to challenging Meryl Streep's record, Jennifer Lawrence is the youngest actress or actor to be nominated three times. That's right, before David O. Russell found her, Lawrence had already been nominated for Winter's Bone in 2011, the role which landed her The Hunger Games. And Lawrence certainly does seem to be a force of nature. Her antics are livening up the red carpets and telecasts, plus thanks to her huge fan base, she's the only thing generating any mainstream interest in this year's Oscars. Wonder why she's getting all the media coverage? Because she brings in the clicks and viewers. The Academy is keenly aware of this and could very well capitalize on it by giving her another win. And why shouldn't they benefit from her celebrity as they helped create it with last year's win? So this would make for two in a row. The last actor to do that was Tom Hanks in 1993 and 1994 with Philadelphia and Forrest Gump. In 1993, he beat out Liam Neeson for Schindler's List and Daniel Day-Lewis for In the Name of the Father. In 1994, John Travolta for Pulp Fiction and Morgan Freeman for The Shawshank Redemption. Those are some pretty good performances denied the gold, and some worry that Lawrence will deny fellow contender Lupita Nyong'o. Is that just the name of the game? With only one winner, there must be four losers no matter how good? Or is it that politics and popularity will deny yet another great performance its rightful place in the film history books? Lupita Nyong'o, 12 Years a Slave. This is Lupita Nyong'o's very first movie, and she's already got an Oscar nomination. Not even fellow Yale acting alum Meryl Streep managed that one. She had to wait for her second film. Yes, with 12 Years a Slave, Nyong'o has certainly jumped into the deep end, not just in terms of the complexity of her role, but the demands of campaigning during award season. And while she's perhaps a little more demure than Fox Searchlight's Oscar PR team would like, she's still considered a frontrunner and favorite by many. Lawrence did shockingly defeat her at the Globes, but Nyong'o evened things up again with a win at the SAG Awards. But whether she wins or not, everyone from critics to audiences unanimously agree her performance in 12 Years a Slave is stunning. Co-star Michael Fassbender marveled that he was acting in the presence of his equal. She's definitely become a hot Hollywood commodity, but now we'll have to see if she becomes a Hollywood player. It's one thing to act, it's another to survive, no thrive in the movie industry. Next up, she plays a flight attendant in nonstop opposite Liam Neeson, Julianne Moore, and Lady Mary Crawley. She doesn't utter a peep in the trailer, though, but hopefully she'll find her voice soon. Maybe on the Oscar stage with her acceptance speech? Julia Roberts, August Osage County. Now this is a Hollywood player, or was. Yes, while she did thrive, these days it has become more about survive for Julia Roberts. She hasn't started in a hit movie since the last time she was nominated for an Oscar and won Aaron Brockovich. Audiences forget, though, that at the beginning of her career, Roberts was something of a Jennifer Lawrence herself, with two Oscar nominations in a row, Steel Magnolias and Pretty Woman. But while Sandra Bullock was able to capitalize on her Oscar win, after Aaron Brockovich, Roberts floundered with the Mexican in America's Sweethearts. She landed the Ocean's Eleven franchise, but then went on to embarrass herself in the tabloids when word got out that she was throwing a fit on set because her Ocean's Twelve co-star Catherine Zeta-Jones had better hair and costumes. Neither appeared in Ocean's Thirteen. She tried to reinvent herself as the villain with Mirror Mirror in 2012, but was totally overshadowed by Charlize Theron's competing performance. 
So now she's literally stripped down to her raw talent for August Osage County and has been getting praise for impressively holding her own against Meryl Streep. Interestingly, it seems Robert shines the most when she doesn't censor herself, another quality she shares with Lawrence. She won't win here, but it will be interesting to see if the momentum from this nomination can allow her to start thriving again. June Squibb, Nebraska. If you thought Bruce Dern was a good Hollywood soldier, making the movie stars look good while hoping to be recognized himself one day, then take a good hard look at June Squibb. The 84-year-old has been consistently acting since 1958, when she started in the theater off-Broadway. This is the only picture I could find on Google of her as a younger actress. It's from her Broadway debut in 1960, where she played a stripper in Gypsy, which starred Ethel Merman. Then at the age of 60, she broke into film with a role in Woody Allen's Alice. But then at that age, as we all know, it's hard for actresses and even actors to find work, much less good work. Luckily, Alexander Payne discovered her, but back in 2002 with About Schmidt, she played Jet Nicholson's wife, who dies early in the film, but still the exposure gave her film and television career a second wind. The roles trickled in for almost a decade. But then Payne showed up again with a role she could really sink her teeth into, and now, at 84, Squibb is a presence at all the big awards shows. So far, she's even won a few accolades, but even if she doesn't win on Oscar night, and she's unlikely to, Squibb is still a shining example of how you should never give up on yourself. Plus, she represents most of the actors out there who never make it to Oscar night, yet carve out fulfilling careers. And those are the 2014 nominees for Best Supporting Actress. Mark your calendar for the Academy Awards on Sunday, March 2nd. And while you wait, I hope you'll vote and be on the trailer's Oscar poll. The link for the poll is in the video description. I'm Grace Randolph, and I hope you'll check out the rest of BTT's Oscar coverage.